uh, and have put together a 10-minute slideshow, which is theoretically impossible for me to do, but in, in any case. Um, the time budget problem is certainly solved by a 10-minute slideshow, but you will, of course, be given the larger two-hour deck, and what some people are planning to do is to take the 10-minute slideshow as the backbone, and then, depending on where you live, depending on the audiences you are addressing, you can pick and choose from the other larger slideshow and put supplemental uh, slides in a as you think is uh, advisable for the venue and for the group and uh, that, that you're So we're gonna make it um, available online. It's far from a substitute for the main slideshow. It's a supplement to it, but we hope that, I, I hope that you will be able to share it with a lot of others. We see this, um, we at Climate Reality see this as an especially important tool for you as you go about your work as climate reality leaders. You'll be equipped, as I've said, to give longer, more detailed, bespoke presentations to particular audiences, but I encourage you to consider this Truth in 10 slideshow as a, a gift or tool that you can pass along to others. Uh, just as I am entrusting you to give a version of the slideshow, I hope you will entrust others with uh, the truth in 10, arming even more people with the facts about this great challenge and great opportunity. This is the most commonly published photograph in history, our entire planet, our home, uh, and there are only three questions remaining about the climate crisis that is affecting the Earth. Must we change? Can we change? Will we change? Let's take them one by one. Must we change? Well, the scientists have long told us that yes, we have to change, but now Mother Nature is joining the debate. Uh, this uh, picture shows how thin the atmosphere is. And we are dumping 110 million tons of man-made global warming pollution into the Earth's atmosphere every 24 hours. And that's making the Earth warmer because the basic science is fairly well known. Energy comes from the sun to the Earth in the form of light radiation, and the Earth absorbs it and re-radiates energy back into space in the form of infrared. Uh, and some of that outgoing infrared is trapped by the natural greenhouse gas layer, which is good and healthy. It makes conditions perfect for us and the other life forms on Earth. But the, all of the added pollution is thickening that greenhouse gas layer and trapping more of the outgoing infrared radiation. The sources of the greenhouse gases are numerous. We're going to focus on the main one carbon dioxide emissions from the burning of fossil fuels, but it's important to note that agriculture is a big source. Uh, burning of forests uh, is a source. Transportation is an enormous source, which uses liquid fossil fuels. But the main one is the buildup of carbon dioxide from our reliance on fossil fuels, which still provides more than 80% of the energy used in the world. And as you can see, it started going up after World War II and in more recent decades, but it's beginning uh, to level off. It is increasing temperatures. These are global temperatures uh, since the 1880s uh, and the 16 of the 17 hottest years ever measured with instruments have been uh, since 2001. The hottest year of all was last year. Uh, heat uh, has an effect on people and animals and plants and ecosystems, uh, heat stress, but most of the heat trapped in the Earth system is going into the oceans, which are warming at an alarming rate. And this causes uh, hurricanes and typhoons uh, and cyclones uh, to be stronger on average. There may not be more of them, but those that do occur are stronger uh, and more destructive. Secondly, all of this heat in the ocean is disrupting the world's 
water cycle by putting a lot more water vapor from the oceans into the air. And that water vapor travels over the land where it falls as precipitation, now in much larger amounts, uh, causing these massive record-breaking downpours that are causing more flooding and landslides. The same extra heat also pulls moisture out of the soil, causing longer and deeper droughts, which are also having uh, a harsh impact. Uh, this is uh, one of many droughts underway in the world right now. And when you have droughts and higher temperatures, the vegetation dries out, and you have more fires. This is one of many fires uh, last year. They're increasing in number. And the climate-related extreme weather events, as measured by the reinsurance industry, are increasing quite uh, dramatically all around the world. The ice is also melting. This is a glacier in uh, Greenland decades ago and today. Uh, and in Greenland, uh, as in Antarctica, the mass of ice is declining very rapidly. And this is raising sea level. This was a trip, uh, this is uh, a scene from Miami, uh, Miami Beach, Florida, on a sunny day when there had been no rain. But this is a sea level rise that's threatening not only Miami Beach, but also coastal cities and low-lying low island nations all around the world. By assets at risk, uh, Miami is number one around the world. By population at risk, there are many megacities in the world that are already suffering the consequences of sea level rise. This is also a national security issue. The U.S. Defense Department has long warned that it would lead to refugee crises and disease uh, uh, pandemics and food and water uh, shortages. Food crops are more sensitive than we had imagined to rising temperatures and yields are now decreasing. The health consequences of the climate crisis include uh, the spread of infectious uh, diseases and many other consequences. Tropical diseases are spreading uh, poleward, partly due to the transportation revolution and air travel, but the places where these diseases take root are shifting with the changing climate. Uh, we saw the Zika virus uh, spreading uh, catastrophic birth uh, uh, defects uh, last year. It's one of many new disease threats linked to the climate crisis. We're also seeing a threat uh, of a mass extinction. Up to 50% of all land-based uh, species are in danger of extinction uh, in this century. So the costs of the climate crisis are mounting up. We haven't even discussed uh, ocean acidification and some of the other consequences. But we should discuss the economic consequences. It's been designated as the number one threat to the global economy. So the answer to the first question, must we change, is clearly yes. Uh, now, what about the second question, can we change? Well, thankfully, the answer to that question is also yes, because we have the solutions at hand. The best projections uh, just uh, 17 years ago for wind were 30 gigawatts by 2010, when we have now exceeded that by 16 times over. The deployment of wind energy is increasing at a rapid pace. Globally, wind alone could supply 40 times all of the energy the world needs. With solar, the story is even more exciting. The best projections 15 years ago were one gigawatt added per year by 2010. When 2010 rolled around, we beat that by 17 times over, and last year we beat it by 75 times over. The spread of solar energy is even more dramatic and growing even more rapidly because the cost is coming down so quickly. In many regions, it is now cheaper than electricity uh, from the burning of fossil fuels. We're seeing the spread of solar energy to developing countries. Uh, and here, this uh, inspiring story from Chile shows that they have steadily grown their deployment of solar energy and what's under construction and ready for construction now uh, is really inspiring and exciting. And there are multiple regions around the world that are poised for just this kind of breakout, particularly as electricity 
from the sun gets cheaper. And every hour, we receive enough energy from the sun to power the entire global economy for a full year. We're seeing the development of energy storage with new kinds of efficient and affordable batteries that will allow us to use solar energy when the sun isn't shining and wind energy when the wind isn't blowing. It's part of a sustainability revolution with the scale of the industrial revolution and the speed of the digital revolution. LED lightings, almost 100% of all lights are going to be uh, LEDs uh, in just a few years, uh, growing very rapidly. Again, they're getting cheaper. Electric cars can help us uh, phase out the use of liquid fossil fuels. Here are all the automobile companies that are now moving to electric vehicles. So the answer to the second question, can we change, is yes, we can change. So what about the third and most important question? Will we change? Well, the Paris Agreement was an inspiring signal that the world does have the capacity to change. Virtually every nation agreed to go to net zero greenhouse gas emissions as early in the second half of this century as possible. And people are mobilizing to demand action. It creates jobs. It reduces pollution. It saves our future. So join those who are using their votes, their, their voices, and their choices to fight the climate crisis. Use your voice, your vote, your choices. Speak truth to power. Speak truth to power like your world depends on it. Because actually, your world depends on it. Thank you very much.